Hi, everyone. OK, a um, bit of an intimate audience. Uh, so if you've got any questions or anything, just ask them through it. I'll repeat them for the record. But then, um, yeah, we'll just go through it. Uh, so I'm Connell. I'm the co-founder and CTO at Zapper. Um, Today, I'd like to take you through building some content for Zapbox, which is our uh, mixed reality platform. Um, before I do, I'll just give you a very quick recap of Zapper, because um, let's uh, get through to the demo and doing stuff as quickly as we can. Uh, so yeah, we're Zapper. We're one of the world's leading AR, VR, and MR platforms, independent of a social network. Um, over the last eight years, we've been powering experiences for some of the world's biggest brands. Um, indeed, we're the uh, AR platform that powers all AR in Shazam. Uh, there was a big Deadpool 7-Eleven campaign in the US and Canada that you may have seen recently. Um, in addition to uh, making AR content, we have a suite of computer vision algorithms um, and a complete creative authoring and uh, publishing platform called Zapworks. Um, and this time last year at AWE, we launched uh, Zapbox. Um, the idea with Zapbox is it's like HoloLens, or it gives you HoloLens type experiences, but it's made of cardboard, so it costs $30 instead of $3,000. So much more approachable price point. We like to call it Magic Leap meets Magic Cheap. Um, anyway, there we go. So what's in Zapbox? It has a Google Cardboard style headset that's been adapted for mixed reality. So we've cut a hole out, we've put a strap on, and uh, it's got some padding so that it doesn't hurt your face. Um, we have uh, two cardboard controllers, which um, have a trigger on them like this. And we track these full 3D, six degrees of freedom, um, and uh, using computer vision alone, and computer vision to, to detect the motion of this black bar to know where you've pressed the trigger. So complete uh, controller for mixed reality without any electronics in it. Um, it also comes with a wide angle lens, which um, will be tiny from your distance, but it's on the end of this phone, which just gives a much wider field of view for the camera. Um, it's, it's like one of the few bits that's not made of cardboard. It's made of plastic and perspex or glass, whatever lenses are made of. And um, it comes with some uh, fiduciary, fiduciary markers that you use to kind of mark out your space. So we'll, we'll do that in a sec. Uh, so this was that box last year, um, which we launched. Uh, we sold out pretty quickly. Uh, this year, we are launching Zapbox 2.0, which is an eighth of the volume of the original Zapbox, uh, which means it's a ton cheaper to ship and store. Uh, one of the things about Zapbox is being $30, it makes great sense to put one in every classroom or have every kid have one. But if each one is like big, it makes it a lot harder to make that uh, a possibility. So to respond to that feedback, it's now an eighth of the size, which certainly in the UK means that this is like a letter. Um, and, the cheap, uh, and, and so the shipping's way cheaper. Still got all the same content, so we haven't compromised on that. It's got the headset, got two controllers. It's all kind of flat pack, and you just assemble it. Um, still got the lens adapter and the markers. It's just much squished into a much smaller space. Um, so why don't we have a little look at a bit of that box content before we start making some, because uh, we really don't have that much time. Um, let me see if I can bring up. Uh, uh, Quick time. Uh, there we go. So I'm going to just use QuickTime on my laptop here to hopefully give you a view of the phone that I've got hooked up. It's only tethered just in order to show you what it sees. Maybe uh, recording. Ah, here we go. So this is what it sees. Hopefully, the light won't be an issue. Um, so uh, first step when you're using Zapbox is to put out your markers. So there's these here. It doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't matter how you put them out. You just sort of instrument your area a little bit. Um, the advantage of using markers in just like SLAM or visual inertial odometry is that uh, you can put them anywhere. Like it can be on a white floor. It doesn't have to have any texture or anything like that. It's just going to give you super robust tracking no matter what. Um, and so we'll do the, the map building process. So what it does is it uh, recognizes the markers. You just kind of show it to uh, show, show them to the, the app, uh, and then it recognizes the space and can track it in full uh, six degrees of freedom. Lens is just not quite on exactly right. I'll get it right. Sorry, you get a great view of my beard there. Cool. Um, so let's see a bit of content. So. I've published some content already that uses the controller and trigger. I'm just going to scan that code on my phone, which will load the content up. 
And in this case, um, it's designed kind of for a table, so I'm going to have to hide behind the lectern. Um, the controller is tracked in full three, uh, 3D, six degrees of freedom. I can press the trigger to close the claw, and we get like a proper analog signal from that, so I can close it halfway or all the way or not at all. And in this experience, it's just a little simple demo to show the use of the controller. Yeah, so there we go. Um, lots of other bits of content that aren't just cubes and blocks on the floor, but uh, yeah. So let's do something a bit more interesting. Uh, so I'll just close that for a sec, and let's go back to the presentation. Present to view. Cool. Um, so content for Zapbox is made using Zapworks, which is Zapper's uh, tool for authoring and publishing content. Um, it supports our full suite of computer vision algorithms, supports 3D uh, models, animation, scripting. In two weeks, it gets an update to support dynamic lighting um, and a script-free interactivity mechanism so that you can make interesting things without having to code. Um, and it includes uh, improved support for building Zapbox experiences. We'll see this in the build that I have here today. Uh, then later this quarter, it gets cross-platform face tracking support and uh, AR kit support as well for world tracking. Um, so I thought if it was OK with you, I would just make some content for Zapbox uh, using Zapworks to kind of demonstrate how easy it is. So let's go to our studio tool. Uh, so here it is. Oh, that's not looking very friendly, is it? I'm not trying to like put information into your mind using some. There we go, that's better. Cool, nice. Uh, so this is Zapwork Studio, which is our kind of tool for building content. Um, let's create a new project. I'm just going to give it a really meaningful name that I'll remember later. Um, uh, and here's the tool. So on one side, we have the media library on the right here. Um, that's where you drag content in um, that you can use in your experience. Um, on the left, we have the hierarchy. It's like the hierarchy you get in Unity. And you can um, drag and drop objects and place them into your scene in there. There's properties, which give you, allow you to change the properties of the objects. We have controllers, which is our mechanism for um, making really easy to use stateful animation or UI. Um, but um, I think we should just go ahead and make some. So if I want to make a Zapbox experience, I just uh, go to my project. I go new tracking Zapbox tracker. Um, and if I have a look here, we can see um, I've got a representation of the map that the user might have, so like my one on the floor. And into that, I'm going to be able to put some content. And then I also have representations for the controllers left and right, which, because I haven't put anything on them, look identical. Cool. So here's the map. Um, so I've got some content already, uh, which I'm going to drag into my project. These are 3D models. I've got one of a button and one of a flower. So let's get the button going. Uh, so this is what it looks like. It's a nice button. Um, and if I want to bring that into my experience, I just drag it from my uh, media library side over into my map. Um, and I can use the tools to just like, put it up the right way. Let's make it exact, 90 degrees. And that's going to be an absolute colossal button. So let's bring that down in size. Uh, about that. Um, and then the um, beauty of Zapworks is we can just give it a go straight away. So if we hit the preview button here, it connects to our um, online infrastructure to um, lo load that content up. So I hit um, publish, up it goes. We hope the Wi-Fi works. There we go. It's always the last 10% that takes 100% of the time. Um, we hit preview. Oops. Let me just make sure I have a Wi-Fi connection on here, which I think I do. Um, and that gives me a code that I can scan in the Zapbox app. So here we go, back to the Zapbox app. Um, I'm just going to hide the movie recording a little bit so I can scan the code. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Um, and here's our button. So really fast to drag that content in, hit publish, and a proper mixed reality button. So let's do something a little bit more interesting than that. Um, so let's head back to um, our project. And I brought the flower in in order to put some content on the controller. So there's two controllers in each kit. This one is left, and there's a right controller. Um, and so you can, you can um, 
target content to the left and the right, or you can have it go to either controller. I'm going to delete my right controller here and then just say that the left controller can be any controller so that um, we can just uh, be playing with the one we've got. And then I'm just going to drag the flower model onto the controller um, like this. And let's give it a little bit of rotation. Oh, wrong rotation. Like that. Set that exactly 90 degrees. Um, let's make it a bit bigger. It has an animation, this, uh, this uh, flower. And so let's uh, make it so when it's all buddied up like that. There we go. So let's scale it up and position it a bit better in the controller. Scale it up a bit bigger. And let's hit preview. Uh, same trick as before. Going to get a code. Here it goes. I'll scan it in here. Back to QuickTime. Content downloads. We have our button and we have our flower. Cool. So, next step one of the new features in Studio is dynamic lighting. Um, so, I thought what we could do is we could make the world as if there's no lights on and then turn the wand into a torch so that you can point it and see the button. So let's do that. So if we head back to our uh, project, um, what I'm going to do is go into the button and uh, tell it that it should be a material, it should use a material that receives light. Because at the moment, all of the lighting is just kind of baked into the texture that's applied to that button. So I can go in here and say standard lighting material instead of just a no lit material. Um, choose its texture, and then just say that the model should use that material instead. Um, and because we currently don't have any lights in here, it is very dark. But I can add a simulated light to kind of have a look around in here. There we go. So I pop back to my scene here, and um, we can see here, I'll turn off the uh, simulated light. Don't add a simulated light. And the camera is going to ruin the illusion here that we're in the dark. So I'm just going to put a blank plane behind the scene, so like this, which will hide the camera and uh, give us the, uh, the appearance that we're actually in a very dark room, which is not far from the truth. Um, here we go. And then on our controller, um, where we are, here we are, uh, the, we have the flower here. You know what, let me just turn this off for the moment so we can see what's going on. Um, so here we have the flower. We want to put a spotlight on it so that we can, we can shine like a torch, um, oh, a flashlight. Sorry, we use torch in the UK. Uh, so let's add that in here. So we've got lights, spotlight. It's facing the wrong way, so let's rotate it round. Like this. Uh, so yeah, 180 degrees, exactly. And uh, I tried this beforehand, so I know some good values for like the angles. So let's go for 30 degrees. That just gives a narrower cone for our torch. And we want the torch to go for a long way, so we'll increase the range. And we'll put the intensity up so it's really obvious what's going on. Cool. Um, and then let's put the plane back on again. Uh, there we go. And I can hit preview, and we're off to the races again. Uh, it gives me another code to scan, as always. Scan that with the app. Content is downloaded. We're in the dark. You can see our flower. And by moving the controller like this, we have a torch. Um, so as you can see, really simple to continue prototyping and publishing that content. Um, so. The next steps I were going to take um, is to make it so that when you take your controller and you tap on the button, it turns the lights back on, um, which is pretty simple to do. And you can do it in Studio without using any scripting at all. Um, you just set actions for ha what happens when objects come close together. So we have a trigger that um, a trigger region, we call it, so that if your controller comes in to touch the button, then our actions happen. And those actions can change the properties of, of what's happening in the scene. Or you can script it in JavaScript, whichever you're more comfortable with. Uh, I think we may be running out of time um, to do that. Uh, so um, it will be left as an exercise for the reader. Uh, or if you want to come and see it in, uh, happening, then uh, we're down at booth number 711, where we're also selling Zapbox kits for $30. Uh, cool. Uh, so I think that's it from me. So if anyone has any questions, um, I would love to answer them.
No questions? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, so we actually support TypeScript, which is um, a kind of type safe form of JavaScript. Um, it looks, I suppose, and feels like, uh, like JavaScript. Um, JavaScript is the kind of lowest common denominator for us because we can run it in interpreters on all mobile platforms. Um, so that's why we, we compile down to JavaScript. Cool. Any other questions? No? All right. Uh, well, thank you very much for having me. <laughs>